Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on everybody? This is Joseph Conlon coming to you tonight with your AEW Dynamite Review on Wednesday, June 10th, 2020. And tonight, I thought Dynamite was an excellent show. It wasn't perfect by any means. I don't think it was perfect, but it was an excellent show in my opinion. Lots of great stuff tonight. Every single match delivered. Uh, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about FTR's debut against the Butcher and the Blade. That was fantastic. That was a fantastic tag team match. Um, we saw Chris Jericho take out Orange Cassidy with a sack of oranges, which made Orange Cassidy bleed out of his ear. We'll talk about that. And then finally, your main event, TNT Championship Mark Quinn versus Cody. This was a great match, and I cannot wait to talk about it. But sounds stacked. That sounds stacked. But before we get to tonight's Dynamite review, I need you guys to do me a favor. Make sure you guys go check out my NXT TakeOver In Your House review and the Monday Night Raw review that I did this past Monday, which was the Go Home Show to Backlash, and speaking of Backlash, that video is going to come out on Friday, and I'm going to record it tomorrow, that's going to be a great video, so make sure you guys don't miss that, Backlash predictions on Friday, and without further ado, man, I, this was so damn good tonight, let's get right into it, we started off with The Butcher and The Blade versus FTR, before that, Chris Jericho was on commentary for only half the show, and he came out and he said, it's back to the old days with me and Tony Skiavone before Jim Ross is laying at home, and Excalibur was milking the cows. <laughs> he said Excalibur was milking the cows, and I, I laughed my ass off, man. I laughed my ass off so much. That was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm laughing while saying it. That's how funny this was. This was this was hilarious. Excalibur was milking cows. <laughs> I laughed my ass off, man. Uh, Jericho's great. Jericho's really great. But we start off the evening actual-wise. <laughs> I can't get over that, man. We start off with The Butcher and The Blade versus FTR. And FTR came out in a truck. The same truck that they came out on two weeks ago when they confronted the Young Bucks and attacked The Butcher and The Blade. So this was a fantastic tag team match. Let's talk about it. I took notes for it. Let's get to it, man. Harwood and The Blade... Lock it up to start the match. FTR drove a... I, I put that in the notes. I wasn't going to forget it, but just in case. Uh, FTR driving their truck to ringside. And then we have uh, observers in the audience. Like, not where the wrestlers are. Like, some of the wrestlers are sitting in the actual seats. So we got Tully in one aisle... Arnie Anderson in the other aisle, and Sean Spears sitting all the way back of the section. And then we also saw uh, Jake Roberts and Lance Archer watching this match. So Harwood and Blade give each other chop, uh, chops and stiff forearms. Harwood does a, a cradle for a kick out to the Blade. Both teams... Both teams get in each other's faces. The wrestlers on the outside then start chanting FTR, FTR, FTR. Uh, Cash Wheeler and The Butcher then tag in. Wheeler drops, uh, drop kicks The Butcher and he fakes a shoulder injury, which is classic. He said, Tony Schiavone said, that is classic Bret Hart from uh, Cash Wheeler. So he faked a shoulder injury. Then the Butcher hits a running uh, crossbody 
to uh, Wheeler. That was very nice. Uh, the Butcher then chokes Wheeler at the corner. Butcher and Blade tag in and out to beat up uh, Cash Wheeler. Harwood, uh, uh, Wheeler counters a crossbody into a power slam. Uh, Wheeler then tags in Dax Harwood, hits a swinging neck breaker, then a brain buster. Uh, the Butcher shoves Harwood off the top rope. Harwood suplexes the blade into a elbow drop by Wheeler, and the blade kicks out. Harwood kicks out of a near fall from the blade. FTR hits um, Goodnight Express, which used to be called Shatter Machine in uh, WWE. It's now called Sh uh, Goodnight Express in AEW. Then they hit Mind Buster on the blade for the win. After the match, the, the Young Bucks come out to congratulate FTR on their win, but they didn't really introduce themselves in AEW. So they introduced themselves to FTR, and Matt Jackson was like, my name's Matt Jackson, this is my brother Nick, we are the top of tag team wrestling, we're the top tag team in AEW, and we have been carrying the tag team division on our back, and we've been carrying tag team wrestling on our back for years now. And then after that, uh, the Butcher comes in to attack the Young Bucks. The Blade join. FTR attack the Butcher and the Blade. Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc come running out to attack the Young Bucks. And then out comes uh, Kenny Omega and Adam Hangman Page, who had a beer with him. This was awesome. This visual right here. This is not even the entire tag team division. You got those five tag teams, uh, Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall, Private Party, Jurassic Express, The Dark Order, who came back tonight, thank goodness. Um, so many, I'm probably forgetting so many other tag teams. This tag team division, SCU, um, if you don't think that AEW is the best tag team division in the world, you are fooling yourself. You're doing it because you are a WWE shill. If you don't think that AEW has the best tag team division in the world, you are a WWE shill. I'm just saying it right now. Even, uh, uh, even a twelve, uh, even a WWE mark will look at both. Will look at both divisions and should realize that AEW has the much better tag team division. So that was that. This was a great tag team match and a great segment afterwards with most of the tag teams in the ring. We then saw an interview with Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall with Brandy and Allie. Brandy was like, why is she wearing my, night my Nightmare Family jacket? That is my jacket, not hers. QT was like, she is a part of the family. She is my girl. And then it was announced that next week that Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall would be getting a tag team championship match against Kenny Omega and Adam Hangman Page. And Dustin was like, QT, I've been in the business for so long. Multi-tag multi team champion. And now us, the, the natural nightmares have a chance to become the tag team champions. And you can't blow it for us. I need you 100% next week. You and me going for the tag team championships right before Fighter Fest. It's going to be me and you. Allie's not coming out there. So next week, we are getting Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall versus Kenny Omega and Adam Hangman Page for the tag team championships. At first, I was like... This makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. They're just doing this based off the QT Marshall Alley storyline that they got going on right now. But then um, DJ Storms told me, shout out to him if he's watching. I'm sure he is. So shout out to DJ Storms. Um, he said that uh, Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall are actually undefeated as a tag team. 
and they are ranked number two in the tag team division. So I'm going to give it a pass just because of that. They're undefeated. I guess you, you give them the tag team championship match next week. No way are they going to win the championships. I, I see uh, QT Marshall costing... Uh, I see QT Marshall accidentally costing his team the tag team championships and Dustin getting all pissed off. And that could lead to a match between uh, Dustin and QT Marshall. Penelope Ford and Nyla Rose versus Chris Statlander and Hikaru Shida. When I first heard this one announced, I was not a fan of it whatsoever because of what happened with Nyla Rose and Britt Baker. A few weeks ago and Britt Baker hurting her knee. And AEW trying to do too much in the multi-women matches. But this one was not bad. This was actually decent for what it was. Uh, Penelope Ford kicked out a Falcon Arrow from Hikaru Shida. And then I think it was Nyla Rose who threw the belt into Penelope Ford. Penelope Ford hit Hikaru Shida with the belt. Threw it back out the ring. And... Penelope Ford pinned Hikaru Shida, which was, I did not expect that whatsoever. I expected actually Nyla Rose to pin Chris Statlander, and we're going to get Nyla Rose versus Hikaru Shida at Fighter Fest. That doesn't seem to be the case. I have no idea if Nyla Rose is ever going to get a rematch, but it looks like at Fighter Fest, uh, we could be leaning towards Penelope Ford versus Hikaru Shida for the Women's Championship. Not a bad match. This was probably one of the best multi-women matches in AEW so far, if I'm being truthfully honest with you. And Penelope Ford versus Hikaru Shida. That's a nice filler challenger for Hikaru Shida before I think um, she eventually faces Nyla Rose again because I I think Nyla Rose is going to build herself back up to the point where she needs a needs a, a, a rematch for the championship. So... That's where I see AEW going forward after uh, Penelope Ford, probably at Fighter Fest. Um, where are we? Inner Circle. The Inner Circle. Best Friends and Orange Cassidy. So we got the Inner Circles, Santana, Ortiz, and Jake Hager versus uh, Best Friends and Orange Cassidy. Uh... Inner Circle attacked the best friends before the match. Hager is attacking Orange Cassidy, and he slams Cassidy on the ramp. Santana and Ortiz then beat down Trent. Santana gives Trent a chop to the corner, with Trent returning the favor with another knife-edge chop. Trent gives Santana Mm -hmm. a backdrop uh, to the outside, I think this was. Um, Ortiz then tags... And uppercuts Trent. Chuck Taylor then hits a topade on uh, both Santana and Ortiz to the outside. Uh, Hager then hits a running Hager bomb to Chuck Taylor for a two count. Hager then puts a rest hold on Taylor while he's on the rope. And then we go into the break. Back from break, Trent hits a... Nice swings DDT to Ortiz. Trent, Trent's DDTs are just very smooth. Trent is very, very good at what he does. WWE back then, incredibly. I, I, I was a little kid back then and really didn't understand wrestling. But now I go back on it. Trent was very underutilized as Trent Beretta. And, and he's came into his zone in AEW. Trent is... Probably one of my favorite, and I would not be. Sh- I would not be. I, I, let me rephrase this. I would be in favor of Trent eventually getting a singles run in AEW. That's how good uh, Trent is. Hager and Cassidy then make a tag, and Cassidy does his kicks to Hager's shins, and then Hager goes to attack Cassidy, and Cassidy ducks. Hits a drop kick to Hager, and then um, Cassidy hits a double Hurricane Rana on Santana and Ortiz, which is very impressive. And then they suicide dive to Hager. Um, 
Cassidy goes for a top rope DDT. Hager catches Cassidy for uh, a slam. Uh, the gut wrench to Cassidy and Trent breaks it up. Santana hits a jumping cannonball to Cassidy. Uh, t- uh, Chuck Taylor and Trent push off Hager and Santana to the to the ringside. Cassidy then rolls up Ortiz for the win. So the best friends and Orange Cassidy get the victory. Great six man tag team match. Orange Cassidy very good um, with his spots with Santana, Ortiz, and Hager. All six guys are very good. And of course, we were going to get a great six man tag. And that's what we got at the end of the night. Jericho then comes in with his bat and he starts beating down the best friends and Orange Cassidy. I think he hit Trent in the stomach with his bat and they took out the best friends and then they put all their focus on Orange Cassidy. Uh, Hager, Santana, and Ortiz were holding up Orange Cassidy and uh, Jericho hit his bat Floyd to Orange Cassidy right in the face. Uh, Orange Cassidy then had blood coming out from his ear, pouring it down on his face. Jericho then got something from underneath the ring, and it was a a sack of oranges, a gigantic bag of oranges, just sitting down uh, underneath the ring. Jericho has the bag, and he hits Cassidy right in the face with a sack of oranges. And he does it again. And Orange Cassidy's face is covered with blood. And the inner circle just stand tall over the best friends and Orange Cassidy. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. The post beatdown was brilliant. The, the sack of oranges was funny. And it made a lot of sense. And then Jericho got on the microphone and said, Don't you ever get in my business again. And he said the blood on Orange Cassidy has been juiced. Funny stuff there, man. Funny, funny stuff from Chris Jericho. This was awesome. Orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho is basically all but confirmed for Fighter Fest. And that's going to be gold. That is going to be absolutely awesome. I cannot wait for Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy. And I can't wait for Fighter Fest. We'll talk about Fighter Fest towards the end of the video. We then got to um, a vignette with Joey Jan. I, I, I think. No, we saw MJF. MJF was talking and he was like, It's really funny how Jungle Boy. Got a championship match when MJF has been ranked number one and undefeated for one year. He's been ranked number one for three weeks. And Jungle Boy got in the face Cody for the TNT championship last week. Billy Gunn then got on the microphone and he said, He said, I am the shark. Uh, MJF called himself a big shark with all the memos surrounding him. And then Billy said, I'm the shark with... Uh, you as the memo. Um, MJF then said something about his son, Austin. Warlow got in the face of Billy. And that set up a match next week between MJF and Billy Gunn. MJF will probably win. And he should win. Sammy Guevara versus Boom Boom Colt Cabana. This was, this was a solid match. Not great. It was a solid match. Between these two guys, Sammy needing a win, Cole Cabana needing a win, JR was really hyping up this match. And I did not take notes for this match, but at the end, uh, Colt was going for his Chicago Skyliner and he slipped. Sammy caught him, had him on top of his shoulders, gave him that knee strike to the face, GTA he calls it. And Sammy Guevara got a huge win over. Uh, Cole Cabana, uh, again, not great, but it was a solid match, and Sammy got the much-needed win over Cole Cabana. Then we saw 
two segments following this match. The Dark Order came out, and they were led by Evil Uno and Stu Grayson. Amen. I am so happy that Evil Uno and Stu Grayson are back with the Dark Order. They, the Dark Order needed Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, I feel like, to, to finalize that stable. Now they got Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, John Silver, Alex Reynolds, A Alan Angles, Angels, Preston Vance, 5 and 10, and Brody Lee. So Brody Lee walked up to Cabana. He offered his hand and he lifted Cabana up. And the Dark Order walked to the back. And Cole Cabana followed the Dark Order. And then we got saw Sammy G on the microphone. And he said, put my music on. And he said, I'm the best. I'm the Spanish God. I beat some fat slob, Cole Cabana. I beat him clean. And then Matt Hardy came out. And he said that he wanted to congratulate Sammy for his victory. And he respects Sammy. And he called him the future of AEW. And Sammy will be a future AEW world champion. And um, Sammy was like, I'm not falling for it. You're you're talking BS. And then Matt Hardy said. The way your career is going to get started. And I'm being serious when I say this. You need to get away from Chris Jericho in the inner circle. So then that's when Sammy said this is all BS. And he's staying with Chris Jericho. And then Matt Hardy turned into Damascus Matt Hardy. And wanted to delete Sammy Guevara. So, I think this is all going to lead to a match at Fighter Fest between Sammy Guevara and Matt Hardy. And then I think Sammy Guevara is going to beat Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy is going to put him over the, the way he should. So, this was great. I loved both, both of them. I liked the Sammy G and Matt Hardy thing more. I'm really interested to see where that's going. Uh, do I think Colt Cabana is going to join the Dark Order? I don't. I don't think Colt Cabana is going to join the Dark Order. It's just going to turn into a match between uh, Cabana and Brody Lee with Brody Lee winning the match. We then saw a vignette from Joey Janela where he was sitting at the bar saying this time last year he was main eventing Fighter Fest with John Moxley in an unsanctioned match. And then after that, he's kind of got lost in the shuffle. He's been wandering around, uh, having great matches, but losing. But something needs to happen. And he said, I need a change. And he walked outside and he saw Sonny Kiss sitting in some car. And he said, there's an extra seat. And Joey Janela sat in there. And it's at To Be Continued. Um, I like Joey Janela. I think Sonny Kiss is alright. But I'm not in favor of them being a tag team. We have we have way too many tag teams in AEW. We don't need another one. The tag team division in AEW is so great. But again, we do not need another tag team in AEW. We then saw Brian Cage and O Moxley get an interview on his thoughts on Taz and Brian Cage. And he said, they're really trying to poke the bear with me. And they finally poked the bear. And I'm out of the, and I've wait, awoken. And at Fighter Fest, I'm going to kick the shit out of Brian Cage. And then Taz popped out and said, I've listened to you in my car. And I couldn't listen to you anymore because all you're talking about this shit. And you're underestimating us. And then Brian Cage came running out of the back of a truck and bulldozed John Moxley. Them two then got into a huge fight in the parking lot near the guardrail. Uh, Moxley swing the baseball bat at Cage but hit the, the car window. 
and Cage then slammed Moxley onto the car, and uh, Taz said, that's enough, we made our statement, let's go, and then Cage picked up Moxley and slammed him through the car, the car uh, window, the front of the car, so that was absolutely sick, I cannot wait for Brian Cage versus John Moxley, I've said this so many times, it's going to be a war. <laughs> We then got a couple matches announced for next week. Um, Billy Gunn will be taking on MJF. Uh, Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc will be taking on the Young Bucks. Lay Sex Gods, Sammy Guevara, and uh, the Best Friends. Uh, Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho will be taking on the Best Friends with the Best Friends number one contendership on the line. If they lose, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara will become the number one contenders for the AEW Tag Team Championships. Um, Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall, Natural Nightmares versus Kenny Omega and Adam Hangman Page. And a TNT Championship match next week. So, it's going to be a great show, man. Next week, looking like a very damn good show. I'm excited. Already. Can it be next Wednesday already? Never mind Backlash. I want Dynamite. Main event. TNT Championship. The champion. Cody. And the challenger. Mark Quinn. This was great. So. The bell rings. And Cody and Quinn. Shake hands. Co uh, Quinn. Came out with Isaiah Cassidy. And Matt Hardy. Uh, and seems like Private Party got new theme music, which I am a total fan of. Not really a fan of their old theme music. They needed to change that. Their new theme music is very good. I love it. Both guys give each other stiff forms to start New Japan style. Uh, that's the way New Japan starts a match with the forearms. Uh, Quen then gives Cody a shoulder tackle. Cody goes for disaster kick and Quinn hits a drop kick. Cody hits a side kick to the head for a kick out. Cody then puts Quinn in a surfboard position and like pulls his neck back for like a submission hold. Quinn gets out. During the picture in picture, Cody goes after Mark Quinn's left knee. Back from break, Quinn. Hits a beautiful Pele on Cody. Cody hits a vertical suplex on Quinn for a kick out. Quinn hits a standing moonsault on Cody for a kick out. Quinn hits an amazing corkscrew DDT to Cody for a kick out of two. Then this was when Mark Quinn was going wild. So Mark Quinn was selling his left knee during the match. Quinn... Hits a toe paid to Cody on the outside. And then he comes back in the ring. Is selling the knee. Quinn hits a trifecta. To Cody on the outside for another two count. Quinn. Cody's laying on the ramp on the outside. And Mark Quinn hits a 450 to Cody on the ramp. That was awesome. That spot was awesome. Mark Quinn then tried to go for the knockout punch with a shooting star. And Cody caught Mark Quinn in a heel hook. And Cody retained the TNT Championship over Mark Quinn. Before I get to the, finals, the final thing that happened before the show went off, I want to talk about this match. Because this match was great. And in my opinion, it was better than Jungle Boy. I'm going to say it right now. Cody and Mark Quinn was better than Cody's match with Jungle Boy last week. It was very nice and simple. It had a great story with Mark Quinn selling the knee injury from two weeks ago. Mark Quinn being the desperate man, doing anything he can to capture the TNT Championship from Cody. It was a great story with a great match. And by the end of the night, if you did not know who Mark Quinn from Private Party was, 
after his match with Cody tonight, you will know who Mark Quinn is. The man is a superstar. After the match, out comes Jake Hager. I don't know why Jake Hager came out, but he got in the face of Cody. Arn was walking up to, uh, to Hager, and Hager started to choke Arn out. Cody then started to attack, attack um, Hager and Private Party, and Matt Hardy came out with steel chairs. Cassidy hit Hager in the back with a chair. Quinn threw a chair at at Hager, and Matt Hardy hit a clothesline to Hager on to go to the outside. Santana, Ortiz, and Sam Guevara then came out, and we got a big brawl between Cody, Private Party, and Matt Hardy, and the Inner Circle to close out Dynamite. Then Cody said, got on the microphone, he said, Jake, I'm guessing you want a TNT Championship match at Fighter Fest. Well, you got it. So, at Fighter Fest, it's going to be Jake Hager versus Cody for the TNT Championship. And I knew eventually, eventually, when Jake Hager um, debuted in AEW, I knew eventually that he was going to have a feud with Cody. I did not know when it was going to be, but it looks like they're having a mini feud right now over the TNT Championship. I don't think this is going to be a, a like the big feud that culminates on a pay-per-view. That's what I was thinking, and I still think it's going to happen, but now uh, we're getting Jake Hager and Cody for the TNT Championship at Fighter Fest, and Cody will probably win, and I still think we will get a long-term feud in the future between Cody and Jake Hager. I still see it happening to this day, a feud between Cody and Jake Hager. But that is it for AEW Dynamite tonight. Excellent show. Great show tonight. Fighter Fest is looking extremely good. Brian Cage versus Moxley for the World Championship. Uh, Best Friends versus Omega and Page. Or Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall for the Tag Team Championships. And then Jake Hager and Cody for the TNT Championship at Fighter Fest. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have not already, subscribe right here on the Big Fight Field channel. We got four stacked days right here on the channel. We got NXT tomorrow, Backlash Predictions on Friday, my Backyard Brawl match with Eddie Mullins. I'm telling you, you guys are going to want to tune into that video. Please tune into that match. Uh, I'm going to kick Eddie's ass on Saturday, so make sure you tune into that. And then the Backlash review on Sunday night. Make sure you tune into all four videos here on the channel. Comment down below, man, what you thought of tonight's AEW Dynamite review and its episode itself. Like this video if you thought tonight's Dynamite was excellent like I did. And follow me on Twitter, at Colin underscore Joseph. And Instagram as well, at Colin underscore Joseph. And follow the Vex, Eddie Mullins, at Twitter, at Eddie Mullins 515. Like I said, I will be back here tomorrow for your NXT review, which I'm going to go watch right now. So have a good night. Stay safe.